on my friends welcome back to the channel if you guys are new here consider subscribing join the community leave a like if you enjoy this if you guys want i can make a full breakdown on this video showing some of the editing today we're going to be talking about data moshing data moshing however you want to pronounce it I really want to take your hand and guide you step by step through this i think a lot of people get intimidated with this process because you have to use this other software but i promise you it's super easy to do the steps are very simple and easy you just kind of need to get in the rhythm of it practice it a couple of times and you'll be able to do it without thinking so anyways let me just show you some examples of what we're going to do. We're just going to stick to the iframe data moshing to make it easier. And then I'm going to make a full separate video on P-frame data moshing. And I also want to mention that this is an update video to a previous data moshing video I made. I want to update this because a lot of time has passed since I made that. So I know a lot more. I'm able to do it a lot easier. I'm able to explain it a lot better and help you guys in this process. So anyways, here is a little example and we'll play this through. So some simple ones right here and the outcome is really going to depend on the clips. So for example, the clip that we're transitioning to he kind of wipes his hand and it wipes away the pixels you kind of just have to experiment with it sometimes you're gonna get bad results where it's a little pixelated and ugly sometimes you're gonna get really really cool awesome results here's another example kind of comes out like that let's go ahead and I'm gonna guide you through so first step you guys need to go in the description and download a Vitamux. that is the software that we're gonna be using 100% free I also want to mention this is super important and I didn't say this in my last one but if for some reason a Vitamux updates or any of this is not working number one one step should always be to come back to this video and re-download the version that I'm putting in the description. Sometimes a Vitamux will update on its own and you need to have this version. Like I said, if for some reason you're not getting the right settings here, something's not popping up or showing up, go ahead and just re-download that version. All right, so step number one, what we need to do is select the clips that we want to set up a little data mosh in. So let me just hide this layer. And as you can see, here's what these clips look like without any transition, without the data moshing on it, just normal cutting like that. So once you have those cut out, let's go ahead and just select all those clips and we're going to go ahead and just click control C just to copy them. Next, what we want to do is we want to separate this from the rest of our work, keep it organized. We're going to go up to file, new, and then sequence. And then go ahead and just click OK. Just work in whatever sequence you're working with for this project and then click control V just to paste that in there. Now let's scroll through to the beginning here and just make sure everything is looking okay. Now I'm just gonna hold down alt, click on this audio clip and then delete it because we don't need any audio, it's just unnecessary. All right, now that we have this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to file, we're going to go to export and then media and you guys can go ahead and select whatever preset you'd like for the highest quality. I actually have this preset set here and I'm pretty sure I followed a YouTube video for these specific settings. So I'm gonna link that down below if you want some high bit rate settings so that you don't lose any quality and you can name this if you want usually I don't name it I just save it in a place where I can because I'm usually doing this quickly so go ahead and select your preset make sure everything is looking okay and just click export so just export that as a normal video I also want to mention that for the sequence try and keep it simple if you have a bunch of flashy stuff a bunch of glowing sometimes it'll be hard to actually do the data moshing so I recommend you just remove all effects off of this and then add them on later so now that you have the sequence let's go ahead and open up a Vitamux and we're gonna go ahead and just click this button here over to the left. So click open and let's go ahead and navigate and find the clip that we just saved from Premiere. And like I said, because this is a software that people don't use that often, a lot of people kind of get intimidated, but honestly, it's really easy. We just need to click a few buttons. Now this is gonna pop up first. Anytime some random pop-up pops up, just click no every single time. So H2.64 detected, just click no. If you click yes, sometimes it'll freeze. There's another one, index is not up to date, just click no for all of that. When in doubt, just click no. All right, so we have it in here. Let's go ahead and set this up so that we can start messing up these frames and creating that data mosh look. So first things first, what we need to do is we need to come up here to where it says video and you're going to see these little drop down menus. Just click that drop down menu MPEG for ASP XVID. Go ahead and click that. And if that option isn't there, that means your Avidimux version is different. You need to make sure you use the one that's in the description. And just for a reference, that is a Avidimux version 2.5. Okay. So once you've selected it as XVID, you just need to click configure up up this little configuration window. The only thing you need to worry about, just go to frame and then you're going to see this thing that says maximum iframe interval change that all to nine so just select it hold down nine until it's full and click okay so change max iframe interval 
all to nines that's all you need to do like i said it's pretty easy now we're going to go ahead and save this and then we're almost done so like i said really easy just go ahead and click this button here sometimes i've noticed these save boxes will be a little weird sometimes if you search something it won't let you save so just make sure you're clicking on your hard drive or wherever you are saving it just to keep it organized and easy to remember because you're going to be naming a few files and saving a few files i always name this first save to dm1 and that stands for data mosh one Go ahead and save that. Of course, you can choose anything else. Now, I've done this process a lot of times, so I'll just replace this. Don't worry about that. This file isn't gonna have a use once we start doing some other things. Okay, so that's gonna save, and that's looking good. That's saved perfectly. Let's go ahead and click OK. Next, what we wanna do is we wanna come up here to File, and we're gonna go to Open. So make sure you're doing that or it's not gonna work. And we're gonna search here for DM1 the file that we just saved. So search DM1, go ahead and click open. And you're gonna see that this is a little bit messed up because we just went through and kind of broke down the clip. And that is a necessary step so that we can start taking out the iframes. And that's the key to data moshing. We go through here and you can actually see what frame it is. And we're gonna pull out all of the iframes and delete them. So if you just use your arrow keys, you can click right. You're gonna see down here, it shows what kind of frame it is. We have B frames, P frames, but whenever there's a transition in the video, you're gonna see it's an I frame and that's what we wanna take out. So an easy way to do this is as soon as you bring this in here, just click up on your arrow key and it automatically goes to the very first iframe. You can also click these two stack together play buttons right here. That'll bring you, that'll skip you forward to the next iframe as you see. So pretty easy. Now what we wanna do is start pulling out those iframes. And this is a step that I kinda of messed up a lot whenever I was first learning how to do this. So as you see, let's go ahead and find an iframe. And you never wanna delete the very first iframe. Usually there's one in the beginning. Let's skip to the next one and you can double check to make sure you're in the right place just by using your arrow keys and seeing that there is a transition. So let's go to an iframe. And what you wanna do is just click this little bracket that says A and make sure that you're doing this over the iframe. You don't wanna do it to the left. You don't wanna kinda of get it in between. If it says iframe in the bottom right, then you click A. Next, just click on your right arrow key once, just like that, and click B and then click delete. And just like that, that's how you delete the iframes. Like I said, it's super simple. Let's click up on our arrow keys again, or you can click this button right here to go to our next iframe, as you guys can see right there. And now that it says iframe right here, and we know 100% we're on an iframe. Again, we're gonna click A once on our right arrow, just to move one frame to the right. And we're gonna click, and we're gonna click B and then we're gonna click delete to delete that iframe. And the longer the sequence is, the more cuts that are in the sequence, the more iframes that you can pull out. So pull out whatever iframes you want, deleting them in that way that I just showed you. We go up to where it says video one more time, just change that from MPEG XFID to copy, and then we just save it. So like I said, really easy, just follow along those steps. If you ever get stuck, just come back to this video, follow along step by step. And what I like to do here is name it DM2. And for some reason, if it's freezing, just click on your hard drive, make sure there's nothing in your search bar, save it as DM2. It's gonna say already exists. If you've done it before, just click yes. Smart copy, no. Like I said, if you have any rare, weird pop-ups, always just say no. Click okay to this. And now we can go ahead and see the result of what we just did. So to view this, because it's an AVI and because the clip's a little bit messed up, you're gonna need VLC player. And now this player is really good because it can play a lot of different video clips that a lot of the more well-known video players like QuickTime are unable to play. So I'm gonna leave a link to VLC, another free application to search for VLC, open that up, then just go up to media, open file and search for DM2. Now, if you've done this a bunch of times and you only use VLC to watch data moshing videos, search for DM2, click open, and now you can see the result of what we just did. So if you're getting the result that you wanted, you know you did it right. And like I said, I just played it through there. Pretty cool with him coming out of the game. Like I said, it really depends on your clip, the outcome of how it's gonna look. In my last video, I showed you how to convert this from VLC. Converting this file so that we can make it an MP4 and bring it into a Premiere is usually kind of hard to do with VLC because they're changing the versions all the time. For me, sometimes it doesn't work. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna use this online video converter to change it from an AVI to an MP4. And that's going to erase all doubts, all worries of that file not working in Premiere. Go to the link in the description 
that says online video converter. The one that you want to use is this green one. So this is where my link in the description will bring you. Pretty simple to do it here. Just click choose files and search for the file we just saved. So search for DM2 or whatever you decide to name it. Go ahead and click open and then click start conversion. And that's going to say pretty easy because we're only doing this on short clips. The conversion is really fast. It's a lot easier doing it this way than VLC in my opinion. And all this, like I said, free of charge, no hidden stuff. There aren't any kind of pop-ups, annoying stuff on this site. So that's really nice. Now we can name this file whatever we want. Usually I name it after the project file. Click save. It's going to save as a normal MP4. We can just click here, show in folder, drag that right into Premiere, and let's go ahead and check that out. Now there's one more step so that we can get this perfect and synced up. So let's go to the beginning here and if I go forward a few frames, you're going to see there's just kind of like these frozen two frames. Since we're taking those iframes out of that sequence, it's going to freeze. It's going to freeze a few frames at the beginning. Now it's really easy to do this. Just go ahead and click until you get to the part where this video is normal and then just make a cut. So control K and delete that end part and then just drag this and line that up with where you originally had it. And you can test to make sure it's lined up by just clicking this eye. If nothing changes here when you're showing and hiding the layer, that means you're perfectly synced. So let's go ahead and just click play, check it out. Bam, just like that. Easy data moshing. You guys can do this with a huge amount of clips if you want to. You guys can do this with just one transition. You can put in a bunch of crazy transitions. If you guys are watching this, you've probably seen that Amborghini High video where this really became popular. Hopefully this helps you out. And I, like I said, I'm going to plan on making some other videos step by step, really just guiding towards the beginner um, on P-frame data moshing, on a bunch of other cool stuff. Maybe talk about some After Effects, similar data moshing plugins that exist. Anyways, guys, I hope this helped you. I hope you guys enjoy this. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys later.